and I tell you what, it sounds good being able to hear a crunch of leaves instead of, well, it just not being the crunchy leaves. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't decide where I wanted to come and fish at this afternoon, so came up here to the mountain creek, except for fishing a spot that I never really get to fish because this place is constantly just packed with people. But anyway, I have fished it one other time and caught a couple of decent smallmouth from it. But we're just going to, you know, spot hop, not spend a ton of time on any one location just because, you know, you burn them out pretty quick. Anyway, um, yeah, we're going to try to catch some small mouse, some rock bass. Anyway, let's get fishing. Yep, fall is in the air. It's not four and a half billion degrees outside. I mean, it's still warm, but it ain't like walk to the mailbox and get a sunburn kind of hot oh wow this creek is clear like ultra ultra clear now before i step down here i'm going to just kind of scout this and just see if there's anything swimming which there's part of this that i can't see I see something there i think it's a little sunfish of sorts all right we'll fish this for a few minutes see what happens rod of choice six foot acc one piece thousand stratic 12 pound braid four pound fluorocarbon leader 64 ounce jig head on a little wacky rigged um, trout worm right off the bat as soon as it hit the water I said we would keep some rock bass, but you know what? I just don't feel like killing a fish that pretty. And that is a pretty, pretty fish. Let's let that one go. Another one. I don't know what that is. That is a big old green sunfish that's slinging some nice cool creek water on me. Actually, that, that's pretty good. Pretty fish. And there's a tiny little smallmouth right here in front of me. So it gets you back and try to get this little small jaw that's right here because that would be a nice start to this video. Didn't want nothing to do with it. Of course, it would help if I moved the uh, worm down the shank a little bit instead of being right there by the ball. Another one. Another big rock bass. That is a friggin' stud of a rock bass. Jeez. I'll take some rock bass like this all day long. You won't catch me hating on these little dudes. And he is right there underneath that little boulder. You don't ever know where these fish are hiding at. He's up right there under that boulder. It doesn't look like there would be room for a fish that size to get under. Oh, crap. <laughs> Dang it. Where did he go? Where did he go? That, I ain't sure if that was a rock bass or a big green sunfish, but I cast it along this rock right here and this thing shot out from under it. I missed the hook set and it just chased it all the way back. I 
I got you. You just a big old mean bluegill. I would prefer that smallmouth, which honestly, that smallmouth would probably eat you. Yeah, we've got people driving like friggin' hood rats up here, which is dangerous enough as itself. Come on, I want that smallmouth something awful. It's not a huge smallmouth, but for this part of the creek, it's probably a pound, pound and a half. I mean, it's a good one for this creek. Oh, no. What just freaking happened? Are you serious? Another smallmouth just out of nowhere. That one was completely unexpected. But yeah, that smallmouth that I just freaking missed shot out of nowhere. Like I didn't see it whatsoever. And it's, it's about two thirds of the size of the one that I really want. Untangle this spaghetti noodle they decided to weave for me. There's something. It ain't super big, but we shall take us. Jeez. It's just another stud rock bass. I mean, it's not huge, but it's a fun sizer. I have pretty much decided against catching a cook today. Uh, you're hooked kind of funny. There we go, we got you. And that is a big spider. You can just stay the hell down there. Pretty fish. Oh, well, he grazed a rod. He didn't slam against him, but he grazed it. All right, I'm making a change that I kind of hope will get the attention of them smallmouth. I'm going to stick with this little 164 ounce jig head, but you know, I kind of tore the bait. But I'm going to rig this little jig head up, kind of in the middle of the body like that, because they're more likely to grab these things in the middle. Fish. Had to let that one eat it just a little bit, but he got it. Another Reginald. I was honestly hoping it was one of these smallmouth because there's two or three that are around eight to eight to twelve inches or so, and then a bunch that are like around that five to seven inch range one thing i've noticed fishing this little helgramite like this is whenever it comes in contact with a stump or rock or something like that it drags it along that edge making it kind of look like it's you know searching for food or just kind of trying to hide all right I think we've had about as much fun out of this spot as we're going to have. So, well, Max, we might try to hit this little corner down here because I can't get to that from here. And I think there's a spot just down that I can from, or can get it from. So, we're going to bounce from this spot and quit harassing it because it seems like pretty much everything's kind of stopped biting. So, yeah. second spot i sit up here at the top of this road because you know we're up above this spot pretty good and kind of just watched for a few minutes to see if there's anything swimming around and i saw at least two different fish you know decent sized ones 
for this creek. And yeah, we're gonna go down there and try to nip them. Nip them right in the bud. Nip it! <laughs> nip it in the bud! <laughs> Don't come off, don't come off. The thing's a freaking rocket. Away from the stumps. Tire yourself out, tire yourself out. Jeez. That's one of the biggest smallmouth that I've caught out of this creek in a hot minute. Like it's not, that's probably 12, 13 inch, I guess, but the shoulders on this thing. This thing is thick and it is hell sea. That is a gorgeous fish. Or water. I was actually about to just leave this spot because I'd wrapped my, wrapped my line up and put my hook in the hook keeper and all that stuff. and. Turn my camera off and whatnot, and I just happened to look over here to my left, and right, right over there where I cast it to, just under that little arch, um, seen a small little swirl, and seen a shadow next to it. So, I was like, you know what? We're going to give this one more chance. So, anyway. Been down here longer than I want to be without the amount of success I would like to have down here. So we're going to jump ship and go to another spot. And so anyway, see you in just a minute. All right, what do you have hidden today? may have wasted my time stopping here just cause I don't see crap swimming around besides one little bluegill oh crap and it's gone I was so wrong there's one two three four smallmouth and one spotted bass right here if not more Well, we hooked something. It ain't big, but we hooked something. Actually, you know what? One of those two smallmouth, if not two of those, like, I don't know how many smallmouth there were. There's a bunch of them. The most I've seen in one group in a long time up here. Um, well, they could have very easily eat that bluegill. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I got a little impatient right there and uh, missed a fish that was wanting to make this Helgramite its lunch. Got it. Stay pin, stay pin, stay pin. <laughs> I was getting uh, getting real close to just jumping ship on this spot too, and you can stop. But uh, another little smallmouth, kind of uh, on a four percent challenge there, because. In a previous video up here, I said something about seeing if I could catch a fish on the last 5%. And then somebody commented and said 4% uh, challenge. And we got 3% left as of getting it up on the bank. But not a bad little smolly jaw. Let's get it back in the wah wah. And change out a battery. Because this one 
like I said, it's just about dead. But that one, I honestly thought I was snagged on a stump or something because I started to just kind of pull into it and felt some resistance. I was like, hold on a minute. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. Also, another thing that uh, I'm not all about is these things right here. Them some big ones. Them hornets or wasps or whatever they are are every bit of an inch and a half long and there's several of them crawling around this tree. Stay hooked, stay hooked. And you didn't stay hooked, how dare see? Dang it. We had it pretty hot and heavy right there at the beginning, but this last hour or so has been kind of sucky. I had several, oh shoot. Several good fish just look at it and then instances like that where something would pick it up and not have it engulfed enough. Yeah, in case you're wondering, we're just right down the road from a gun range. Fish. Feels pretty good, too. It's because it's a small jaw. Gorgeous fish. Man, that is a pretty, pretty fish. I guess I can adjust my camera, but man, that is a gorgeous fish. No wonder this right here is Tennessee's state fish. They fight, they're pretty. And in some cases, they're good to eat, but I'm not in the interest of, uh, hey, what are you? Do you want a wacky rigged trout worm? Apparently not. That was another smallmouth or something. But yeah, I'm just not in the mindset to eat a smallmouth. I ain't saying I won't ever do it, but... There's better eating out there, in my opinion. Crappie, walleye, white bass, bluegill. But yes, a smallmouth is on the list one of these days. Got something here. Is it what I think it is? I hope it is because I'd like to catch another one dim. And it is what I thought it was. And it ain't what I thought it was. Jeez. That small mouth ain't very big, but I'll tell you what, that thing had some attitude to it. I mean, if it was fighting the entire time, I got it out of the water and it's, even when it was unhooked, it was like, you know what? I don't want you touching me. Man, that is a pretty fish. Kind of gold. Hot red eyes. Well. It's picked up a little bit. I was kind of hoping to come back through here when I first came through here. But there was somebody else already here. So, yeah. Well, I believe we are going to call our quits lost an unfortunate amount of fish but we caught plenty to make up for it some decent smallmouth of this creek some pretty dang good rock bass i am overall pleased with this little trip despite losing quite a few fish which yeah well, that's a good given it's going to happen at some point lord knows i have lost plenty of fish in my day Anyway, we'll see you here in just a second. Wash. 
my well the front screen on this thing is totally screwed since i accidentally slammed it in the hatch of my vehicle so i have to align my shots for the front camera using my cell phone but anyway not a bad little stop caught quite a few small mouths quite a few rock bass a couple other little things here and there and the rod of choice or the weapon of choices i've gone to call it six foot acc one piece split grip rod well i need to pull quite a bit of line off this thing from where it's rubbed against rocks um this rod by itself weighs 3.3 ounces it is so like feather light and it's so like super comfortable like nothing's poking you in the hand with that grip style it's just so very comfortable and if you got a little bit smaller hands like i do and you want to jig a little bit with your rod this front grip section right here is perfect for you know just right off the side of the boat through some lily pads or whatever it is you're jigging into but real 1000 stratic and the line is that jdm 12 pound braid by Seaguar. it is the pex8 lure edition why they call it lure, lure edition i'll never know because pretty much all fishing lines are lure edition if you think about it but it is a pretty expensive braid but it's damn worth it also check out all of the links in the description below especially the top links those are my affiliate links one with mule fish and supply company if you want to buy some of the products through that link i get a little bit of a, kick, a kickback and also the new affiliate link below that one will be my creek life lure company affiliate link which i just recently got affiliated with and with creek life lure company if you buy something through there use code creek 10 to save 10 percent on your purchases got a lot of stuff going on there that's a family run business it's husband and wife as far as i know and they make a lot of really awesome stuff so anyway i'm gonna get home and get this video put together that's the downside of filming by a gun range but yeah, I'm going to get home and get this video put together. Again, check out the affiliate links in the very top of the description. If you want to support the channel, again, when you buy something through those links, I get a little bit of a kickback from that purchase and use code CREEK10 on Creek Life Lure Company and buy you some baits, save some money.